We all know that a cast iron skillet can sear a mean steak. Matter of fact, it can sear any protein. It's the king at searing. But one of the most popular questions that I get asked is, how does a carbon steel skillet compare to a stainless steel skillet when it's time to sear a steak? Well, in this video, we're gonna sear up some ribeye steaks and we're gonna compare the two pans against each other. And we're gonna find out which pan seared a better steak. Let's dive in. So I took a poll last year before I shot the video asking you guys which skillet do you think would come out on top? Carbon steel, stainless steel, both of them, neither of them, or maybe you didn't even know what searing was. Well, I think some of you guys are being funny, but I'll answer it anyway. Searing is when you bring your skillet up to really high temperatures and then you put your oil in there, you let your oil shoot up to, you know, just about smoking point. You'll see the oil kind of smoking just a little bit. And then you put your proteins on there. You want to make sure your protein's nice and flat. What happens is the skillet and the oil are incredibly hot and you get a nice seared crust where the protein will begin to caramelize. You get this really nice brown crust layer. Flip it over, you do the same thing, and it just gives an amazing texture for your steak. The fat renders beautifully, the crust renders, the proteins start to break down, and depending on what you're cooking, of course, you get some sugars that break down as well. It just brings your whole cooking experience to another level. It's actually one of the fundamentals of cooking is learning how to sear proteins. Anytime you cook protein, you want to sear it and get that caramelization and that crust, whether it's chicken, pork, steak, lamb, whatever, even fish, you want to get that seared crust on top, like for example, for salmon. And depending on what you're cooking, obviously the technique changes a bit. You'll dial down your temperatures or, you know, for example, if you're cooking beef like steaks or lamb, you want that temperature of the skillet to be really high. Chicken, you can take it down a notch, and then fish, you can take it down a little bit lower. But in theory, as you're cooking and you're getting used to your pan and getting familiar with it, you'll figure that out. That just comes with experience. So to answer your question, that's what searing is. Now, the majority of you thought the carbon steel skillet was gonna win, right? And to be honest with you guys, I could see why. I mean, carbon steel skillets and cast iron skillets are very similar. Not very many of you just thought the stainless steel would win, which is quite interesting to me. And then actually uh, quite a bit of you did think that both of them were pretty equal, but the majority thought the carbon steel skillet was gonna win. Okay, so I don't know how crazy it is for you guys, but at my local grocery store, we have a meat shortage and there is actually a limit on how much steak you can buy. Although they had the ribeye steaks on sale, you could only buy a total of four pieces and they could only be an inch cut thick or thinner. So long story short, I just needed two ribeye steaks to compare a cast iron skillet to a stainless steel skillet. So I did ask the butcher, since I was only buying two steaks, if he could give me at least an inch and a half cut. And unfortunately he said he couldn't. There was just a huge shortage and because of the sale, they had strict instructions not to do that. I did ask to speak to a manager and the manager said the same thing. And I just didn't have enough time to go to another store and see if they have the same restrictions or not. So I may redo this video. I don't like ever cooking a steak that's thinner than an inch and a half, especially when I'm searing on the pan because I wanna get a great crust and I wanna shoot for that medium rare temperature. The good news is last year, I did a video on how to make a surf and turf. And in that video, I did use my Matford carbon steel skillet and I cooked up some ribeye steaks that were at two inches thick. And I showed you guys how to cook them properly, sear them perfectly on both sides. I answered all the questions on when to add the butter and you know when to put them in the oven to get that perfect medium rare temperature. So if you're looking specifically for how to cook a ribeye steak on the stove top on a carbon steel or stainless steel skillet, Go check out that video, I'll link it here, and you guys can see step-by-step step on exactly how to cook a steak. Now, I always recommend that you get at least an inch and a half thick cut, because that gives you a lot of wiggle room to get a perfect crust and hit that medium rare temperature. Full disclosure, I was a little bit disappointed in this cook because the steaks came out medium and I hate that. For ribeye especially, I think it's a sin to go over medium rare. Anything above medium rare, I feel like you're not getting what you paid for in the steak. And that's just my personal opinion. I know everyone has their own, but 
I like my steaks medium rare and after it was done sitting and resting and I cut into it, it was medium, but it was still delicious. I mean, my wife and I absolutely loved it. It was great. It's just the texture wasn't there. So just keep that in mind. It's really hard for me in particular to cook an inch thick steak or below. And these weren't exactly one inch, they were just below an inch, so they were quite thin. And from my experience, when you're cooking on a stovetop or a barbecue grill, really anything that's high heat, you don't have enough time to really cook that steak to a nice medium rare and get a great crust on it. I mean, for example, these carbon steel skillets, cast iron skillets, stainless steel skillets get incredibly hot. And once you get it seared on one side and you get that great crust, as soon as you flip it over, I mean, you're really running out of time. That steak is cooking tremendously fast and it's hard to get that second crust on the other side. Now, of course, I know all about the fundamentals. I always get a nice crust going, lower the temperature, throw in my butter, and you know, let the steak work itself, but you really don't have much time. And in my case, I'm filming and doing other things and it's really easy just to get lost and you know, miss the mark. And another thing that I don't like about having a one inch cut steak or anything below an inch and a half, I got a nice seared layer on the steak, but there was, especially with the stainless steel skillet, right in the middle, there was a spot that didn't really get seared very well. The carbon steel skillet was a little bit more consistent and that had nothing to do with the pans. Both pans are really good. They're not warped in any way. It's because the steak is so thin that actually when you put it on there, it starts to bow, right? It's not, there's not enough of the meat to hold it down. And although I did kind of like tap it down and kind of get a nice flat layer, I guess I didn't do that very well with the stainless steel skillet. So the steak did kind of bow a bit and you did see a spot that wasn't seared very well. But in general, that all comes with the one inch steak cut that I just don't like. An inch and a half, or even two inches, two, two inches is pretty crazy though, that's a special occasion, but an inch and a half will kind of prevent that from happening. As long as you get it flat on the skillet, there's enough weight, there's enough meat there that it won't bow too much. It'll stay relatively flat. I think for the purpose of this video though, you know, which skillet sears a steak better, I think we got the results we were looking for. So I'll show you guys that at the end. And then I also decided to make some sides. You know me, I gotta make some sides. So I did some mashed potatoes. I roasted some Brussels sprouts in the air fryer with some vinegar and honey and some Parmesan cheese and it was delicious. And of course we did some asparagus with salt and pepper and a little bit of lime. And anytime you have a steak, Brussels sprouts, mashed potatoes, asparagus, you can't go wrong with that. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you guys step by step on exactly which skillet came out on top. Let's check out the B-roll.
Okay guys, so final thoughts. Leave me a comment below which skillet did you think outperformed the other one? Now here's my opinion, they both rock. For those of you that voted, they're both pretty much the same. They're both gonna do very well. I agree with you, but here's the caveat. With the carbon steel skillet, as you guys saw in the video, it was really easy to get a good sear on it. There's not a whole lot that you have to do. Crank up the heat, the skillet will take over from there, and then when you're ready to throw in the butter, lower the temperatures, you're good to go. A carbon steel skillet acts a lot like a cast iron skillet, but it has the benefits of a stainless steel skillet because you can easily manipulate the temperatures. See, with a cast iron skillet, it's so big, it's so heavy, there's so much material that dialing in your temperatures or changing the temperatures can be delayed. It can take quite a bit of time for the skillet to react. Well, with the carbon steel skillet, it's basically a cast iron skillet, but lighter. So it acts a lot like a stainless steel skillet when it comes to temperature control, but it acts a lot like a cast iron skillet when it comes to searing. I actually prefer them over cast irons when it comes to searing steaks or cooking proteins. So the carbon steel skillet was really easy to use. Now let's go to the stainless steel skillet. The stainless steel skillet did an amazing job. As you guys saw from the video, I had it piping hot. I did the water droplet test, although I never do that. I think I got a comment on one of my videos saying, hey, you know, you have to do the water droplet test. And you know, honestly, I never ever do it that way. I always just kind of know how to use my stainless steel skillet. So it never occurred to me. I just can tell when it's ready. But I figured, hey, for video purposes, I'll throw some water in there and show you guys that, you know, it was piping hot. And it was. And it did a fantastic job searing. It definitely seared the steak quicker than the carbon steel skillet. Not by much, but you know, it was quicker because it was so hot. And stainless steel skillets get really hot really quick. So it was easy to get that sear, but here's where things could easily go wrong. Stainless steel skillets are not forgiving. So, you know, it definitely needed to be watched and I needed to know when to flip it. I could have easily burned the steak. I mean, they're not forgiving. So you can't necessarily make too many mistakes while cooking with a stainless steel skillet. And then the other thing that I just kind of want to throw out there was it never stuck. The food never stuck on the stainless steel skillet or the carbon steel, but the stainless steel skillet never stuck. The steak was free moving the entire time. I mean, I didn't check it every, you know, every second, but I think once I put the steak in there and I allowed it to do its thing, it released naturally and we were good to go. The biggest benefit with stainless steel, the fond. You guys saw in the video, I made an amazing gravy out of that fond. It was ridiculous. It paired beautifully with the mashed potatoes. We got all that flavor from the ribeye, the seared fat, the little sticky bits, and made this amazing gravy sauce. All I did was add some onions, some garlic, a little bit of red wine vinegar, some chicken broth, and then I also cooked up some flour on the side of the skillet before adding any liquids, just to kind of get the flour cooked so we don't get that nasty, like, you know, raw flour taste. I highly recommend that. Cook your flour for a bit and then, you know, mix it in there and let it do its thing. Now, the carbon steel skillet, although it was extremely nonstick, it also did have some sticky bits, but nowhere near as flavorful as a stainless steel skillet. The stainless steel skillet does this like magical thing where the sticky bits become like caramelized and intensified. It's really, really nice. And then the other concept of that is, although I could have made a sauce with the carbon steel skillet, and by all means you can, and don't be afraid to add red wine vinegar or anything like that if you have a well-seasoned carbon steel or cast iron skillet. But it's just not as flavorful as a stainless steel skillet from my experience because you don't have a lot of sticky bits. The stainless steel skillet, on the other hand, has a lot of sticky bits. So, you know, that's the biggest pro to stainless steel skillet. So my final conclusion is, they both rock. They both absolutely rock at searing a steak. With the carbon steel skillet, it's a lot easier. The skillet just kind of goes on autopilot and takes care of everything for you. You just gotta sit back and know when to flip the steak. With the stainless steel skillet, it's a little bit more unforgiving. You do have to kind of watch it a bit. There is a bit of a learning curve, but it rewards you at the end with amazing fawn that you can make a great sauce out of. So. They both have their place in the kitchen. There's no need to argue over which is better. Cast iron, carbon steel, stainless steel, they're all professional skillets. And as long as you know how to use them, they all have their pros and cons and they will definitely reward you. That's it for me guys. Hope you found this video informative. Catch you guys on the next one. Take care everybody. Hey everybody. How'd you guys like that last video? Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, 
please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get notified of my next video. And if you can, please share with your family and friends. I would really appreciate it. Here's some more content that I think you guys are really gonna enjoy. Check them out. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.